In order to release the low frequency, we must acknowledge the low frequency. We can't pretend like it doesn't exist. It does. The more that we pretend like it doesn't exist, the more volatile it becomes. You have to commune with your demon. You have to commune with your shadow. You can't ignore it. So quite directly, I ask you, what are you afraid of? Welcome to The Weekly Transit, a podcast exploring the intersection of Western astrology and Jungian psychology. Astrology is a language that communicates how the planets and stars influence life on Earth, while psychology helps us navigate both conscious and unconscious experiences. Together, these tools offer the potential for self-understanding, growth, and transformation. Join astrologer Scott Tajarian and me, psychotherapist Gabriella Durso, as we dive into the cosmic forecast each week. Welcome to the Weekly Transit and thank you for joining us. If you enjoy our content and want to support the podcast, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel, liking our videos, and leaving a comment or question. You can also rate and review us on Apple Podcasts, or if you'd like to donate, you can do so through Spotify for U.S. listeners or DonorBox for those that are international. The links to do so are in the show notes. Gabriella and I truly appreciate your engagement. It helps us tailor our content to your interests and grow our community by reaching new listeners. The theme this week is emotional courage as we highlight the full moon in Aries and Venus in Sagittarius. Now, for those of you who are watching on YouTube or Spotify, you may be wondering, where's Gabriella? <laughs> well, unfortunately, she is sick this week. She has come down with something. She's gone, down, gone through maybe like 75 uh, Kleenex boxes over the last few days. Uh, but she's on the mend. She's getting better. But unfortunately, she is not able to join the, the recording, the podcast today. So it's just me and you. So I appreciate you sticking with me and listening in. I'm excited to share a lot of information with you this week about the planets and stars, where they're transiting, and how to work with the energy to your benefit. Of course, if any of these transits are, if you're wanting to know how they're affecting you, how they are impacting your life on a personal level, and how to navigate that energy to your benefit, then I encourage you to contact me for a reading at theweeklytransit.com. Before we begin, I have a few announcements. I wanted to mention the Sag Moon Sisters podcast. That's Anna and Stina. Anna is wondering at wondering.star.wisdom and Stina is at Sarcastic Seagoat. I'm helping promote their podcast. They're, they've got a really great cause that they're doing right now uh, for the victims of Hurricane Helene, uh, specifically for those that were affected in Western North Carolina. Anna is from North Carolina, so she is directly connected to that area. And Anna and Stina are both doing readings for a donation. And Whatever that donation is that you send them, they will send you a recording of that reading and that donation will go to support and help the victims of Western North Carolina. So I'm going to put the link to that in the show notes. I also wanted to highlight uh, the conversation that I had last week, last weekend, live on Zoom with Delisa Hawking, the fifth generation psychic. We had such an amazing, fun conversation uh, in front of a live audience, which was very exciting. I really feel energized by the live audience. I felt like we had a really wonderful, informative conversation about all the transits coming up over the next, let's say, six, seven, eight months or so, all the way until about June of next year. 
We, of course, covered uh, the election and got into predictions there. And uh, that is available on YouTube to watch. And I will put the link to our conversation in the show notes. I also want to reach out and thank Jennifer Paulo. Uh, she is a writer. She has a substack called The Healers Are Rising. And she's always just so supportive to the podcast. She, her, uh, she sends out an email every Tuesday. And the email that she sent out this past Tuesday uh, coined something that I had said last week on the podcast about uh, making peace with the past. So I'm very inspired that she was inspired by Gabriella and I and what we were sharing. And so I want to uh, promote her as well. The link to her uh, creative work and her wisdom is also in the show notes. Uh, This has been kind of a wild week. For me, not only Gabriella getting sick, but I had four clients cancel on me, four weekly clients cancel on me because they were sick or dealing with some sort of ailment, health issue. So that's very rare. I rarely have one person that calls out, let alone four. But it really, I embrace, I embrace all of all of this movement, all of the movement. I love it all because. When a client cancels, of course, you know, I'm I'm so sad that they're not feeling well and and I want them to get healthy, Uh, but it creates a new opportunity for me. And this week I have gotten a ton of editing done uh, for my other podcast, The Uncharted Territories, which I recorded with Shara Prophet. I'm embarrassed to say how long ago, but (laughs) it's been a long time, but we've just been so busy particularly me, I'm the one that's editing these now, and and it's just a lot. So uh, I've gotten through seven episodes, I've got five more to go, but I just want to say how excited I am to share these with all of you. I know many of you have reached out and have asked, when are we going to get new episodes? Uh, we've got 12 episodes that have been recorded, uh, actually 13, but 12 that we're going to release in this next season, Uh, three on Marilyn Monroe, four on Janis Joplin, and five on Jimi Hendrix. Shara and I, we both can talk. We're a Taurus, she's a Taurus sun, I'm a Taurus rising, so we we really can ramble. But I, (laughs) I don't know, I feel like I'm maybe patting myself on the back here, but I really, I'm enjoying listening to our conversations and I feel like there's so much wisdom in what we're sharing and it's all sort of, um, it's, it's inspired by these, these individuals that we're covering through the uncharted territories. So those of you that are unfamiliar with the uncharted territories and share a prophet, share a prophet is a psychic medium. Uh, she's a licensed hypnotherapist, and she meets with spirits that have passed over from the uh, from this side to the other side, from the material to the ethereal, and and she meets with them, communes with them, talks with them, gets information with them, and I look at where the planets and stars were aligned when these individuals were born, and where they were when they passed over. And so we look at public figures. Uh, You can go back and listen to the first season if you are unfamiliar with it. In the first season, we covered everyone from Michael Jackson to Nipsey Hussle to the Kennedys, JFK, RFK, JFK Jr., uh, Prince, a whole bunch of different celebrities. So... Uh, You can listen to those on Spotify, Apple, YouTube. They're on all the platforms. So I'm really excited to continue working on this. I've got the five Jimi Hendrix episodes to finish. And once those are done, we'll start releasing them, hopefully before the end of the year. So continuing on with this week, and this is the week of October 14th to the 20th. And the theme this week is emotional courage. The highlights this week are the full moon in Aries and Venus's transit into Sagittarius. 
because Gabriella is not here today, I am going to add a little bit more, uh, another uh, bit of conversation. Someone had messaged me, I think, on YouTube about P. Diddy and what's going on with him and his chart. So I'm going to dip into that at the end of the episode. But first, let's begin with the first transit. The first transit that we're covering this week is Venus, the goddess of love and beauty, the planet of relationships, transiting through the deepest, darkest, most passionate sign, the fixed water sign, symbolized by the scorpion, Scorpio. As Venus transits through Scorpio, and makes its way through these last few degrees of Scorpio, it aligns with three planets that we have been talking a lot about, Gabrielle and I, over the last few weeks. This is Uranus, the primordial sky god, the planet of revolution, rebellion, innovation, independence, and the unexpected, transiting retrograde through the fixed earth sign, symbolized by the bull, Taurus, This is Neptune, the god of fresh water and the sea, the planet of illusion, deception, compassion, and intuition, transiting retrograde through the mutable water sign symbolized by the fish and ruled by Neptune, Pisces, and Pluto, the god of death, lord of the underworld, the planet of transformation, the transiting retrograde through the cardinal earth sign symbolized by the goat Capricorn. Now there's some interesting synastry between these alignments because Venus is the planetary ruler of Taurus where Uranus is transiting retrograde through. Pluto is the planetary ruler of Scorpio which is the sign that Venus is transiting through. So these three planets, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, have all been in very close alignment with each other for the last month. The last, really, uh, the last, yeah, a little over a month. It's been about a month and a half. These three planets have been within just a couple degrees, a few degrees of each other. This is very significant. I went back and and I went on astro.com. I combed through uh, all the way back to 13,000 BC. And I couldn't find another instant where these three planets, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, We're all transiting through these three signs, Uranus and Taurus, Neptune and Pisces, Pluto and Capricorn, at the same time within just a few degrees of each other. Now, there was one instant about 9000 BC where they were all three of these planets were in the same signs that they're in right now, but they weren't aligning with each other within a couple degrees like they are right now. So, this really feels like this once every 25,000 years sort of alignment. And it's incredibly significant. You know, maybe this is why people are getting sick around me or out in the world. I don't know. Um, it's just speculation. But there is, there is something shifting. There is a powerful cosmic, not even once in a lifetime, once every 25,000 years shift that is occurring. And this shift has to do with the revolution of your self-worth, your values, the reimagination of your dreams, your unconscious, and the transformation of your relationship to authority and your goals and ambitions. So see, when you can reimagine the dream, that's Neptune and Pisces. We're reimagining the dream. We're, we're delving into our unconscious and we're facing the guilt, the shame, the regret, the blame. And we're learning to love it. We're learning to see the value that exists in those experiences that have caused guilt, shame, regret, and blame. 
Now, if you're running from the guilt, shame, regret, and blame, then you're not getting the goodness, perhaps, that you can retrieve from your unconscious in seeing the value and the wisdom that comes through the experiences of guilt, shame, regret, and blame. You spend time, you're being called to spend time with these experiences and to show yourself compassion so you can integrate these thought patterns and memories with understanding, forgiveness, and love for yourself and for the other individuals that were involved in these experiences. Once you've reimagined the dream and you're learning to love your guilt, love your shame, love your regret, love your blame, now you're able to reimagine the dream and you're able to see that Wow, so that was just an experience. I learned from that experience, as horrible as it may have been, and now I can see new possibilities. I can actually believe that I am worthy of achieving greatness, of achieving something that would be akin to a fantasy. Like when you hear people say, I never even imagined I'd be here. And they're saying it in the most wonderful way. Like they're, like they're pleasantly surprised. Like this is beyond my wildest imagination. This is what the universe, what God wants for us. It wants us to experience that elevation of consciousness where we are able to recognize that the pain and suffering is not punishment. It's meant to help us grow. And so when we've reimagined the dream and we believe that our fantasies can come true, that revolutionizes our self-worth and our values. And that's Uranus transiting through Taurus. Uranus is the planet of revolution. Taurus is the sign that represents self-worth and values. It's ruled by Venus. Venus is the planet that rules the senses. And your senses determine what you like and what you don't like. And what you like and what you don't like is what determines your value. If you like something, then you value it. If you don't like something, then you don't value it. And so Uranus is revolutionizing our relationship to the material and what we value. And as we reimagine the dream and make peace with the guilt, the shame, the regret, the blame, learn to love it, learn to appreciate it, learn to recognize the value that those experiences contributed to our lives, we're then able to revolutionize the way that we think about ourselves and elevate our value to say, you know, I'm actually worth more than that. I'm worth more. And when you're at that place where you can say that you're worth more and your value has elevated, now you're ready to transform your goals and ambitions. And that's Pluto transiting through Capricorn because Pluto's the planet of transformation and Capricorn is symbolized by the goat. The goat is that creature that wants to climb to the top of the mountain. Those are your expectations. So it's transforming your expectations so that they're more appropriately aligned to the elevated nature of your self-worth and values and more appropriately reflective of your unconscious, which is now at peace with itself. So this is what this long transit is, is creating for us. Over this two and a half month period, like really this is lasting from the entire time that Pluto's transiting through Capricorn, which is September 1st to November 19th. So we're all going through an overhaul. 
right now, whether we're aware of it or not. Uh, and if you're not aware of it, maybe you're getting sick so that you can become more aware of, of what's happening internally. Now, Venus transiting through Scorpio. I mean, this, this is such a beautiful, beautiful, powerful transit that is occurring. And it's happening in concert with the full moon in Aries. I mean, sometimes I just look at where the planets are aligning and, and I'm in awe. Like I'm, like I'm sitting back and I'm, uh, at the symphony watching, uh, you know, Dudamel conduct the Los Angeles Philharmonic, you know, with uh, playing Johann Sebastian Bach, you know, the, the Brandenburg Concerto or something like that. It's just, it's mastery. It's, it's enveloping. It just takes you into a place where you're like, wow, wow, this is, this is, this is where you realize that you know, when people say, when is it going to get better, Scott? When are the planets going to realign and, and everything's going to be easier? And, and I always say, that's up to you. That's up to you and how you're working with the energy. Because right now, the way that these planets are aligning are in such a magical way to support you. To support you in transforming your life. And through transforming your life, transforming your relationships. And that's what Venus in Scorpio is about. That's what the full moon in Aries is about. Let's start with Venus in Scorpio. So Venus is transiting through Scorpio for just a few more days. Because on October 17th, the day of the full moon in Aries, that's when Venus transits into Sagittarius. So we've got Monday the 14th, Tuesday the 15th, Wednesday the 16th, and part of Thursday the 17th of Venus transiting through Scorpio. So really think, what do I want to transform about my relationships? Because Venus is the planet of transformation, or because Venus is the planet of relationships, and Scorpio is the planet of transformation. And Scorpio is the... Let me start that over. <laughs> Venus is the planet of relationships. And Scorpio is the sign of transformation. Okay, there. I got it clear there. I get a little lost in my head sometimes as I'm channeling through this information. Uh, but let's think about this for a second. The new moon solar eclipse back on October 2nd was in Libra. Now, if you were listening to the weekly transit, we talked about how this is a, an ending and a beginning of how we do relationships. This is what we talked about in the moon cycle class. And if you're curious to learn how the next lunar cycle will be affecting you directly and how to work with that energy those frequencies to your benefit, I encourage you to enroll at theweeklytransit.com. In the next moon cycle, we will be discussing the new moon in Scorpio and the full moon in Taurus. But back during the new moon solar eclipse in Libra, that was an ending and a beginning of how we do relationships. It was about reflecting upon where there is imbalance in your relationships, where are there imbalances in your relationships, and how can you be more authentic in really recognizing those imbalances and sharing them with those that you are in partnership with? Now that's coming to fruition here for a moment with Venus's final transit through Scorpio before it moves into Sagittarius right during the full moon in Aries. So thinking about 
Uranus in Taurus, Neptune in Pisces, Pluto in Capricorn. The reimagination of our unconscious, the revolution of our self-worth, the transformation of our expectations and goals. As this occurs, and you are transforming, you are reimagining, you are revolutionizing, so too must those around you, especially those that you are in deep bonded connection to. That's what Scorpio is about. Scorpio, when I said earlier, it's the deepest, darkest, most passionate sign. This is about merging souls. This is why Scorpio is synonymous with sex. Because when you have sex with somebody, it's not just a bodily interaction. There's something going on with your soul and the souls that you are connecting to in that deeply intimate way. Now, Scorpio involves other areas of intimacy aside from sex, such as telling a secret, sharing a secret with somebody that nobody else knows. This is what people do with me during my readings, during uh, especially my weekly work with the clients that I work with weekly. A lot of secrets are shared that will never be spoken of again outside of that sacred, intimate space that we create together. But through the sharing of secrets, our souls are bound through the intimacy. This also comes through the sharing of money or financial in information. Scorpio is opposite Taurus, and Taurus is the sign that represents my money. Scorpio is the sign that represents our money, the money that you share with those that you're bonded to. This could be a financial advisor, somebody who's investing your money. They know your finances, they know intimate details about your life. So as you are reimagining the dream of who you are, revolutionizing your self-worth and values, and transforming your goals and ambitions, so too must those that you are bonded with also transform. They must also transform. And as it's important to remember also that these aspects aren't happening in a box just with you. See, the people that you're bonded to, that you're intimate with, they're transforming. They're reimagining their dreams. They're revolutionizing their values. They're transforming their goals and ambitions. And as they do, so too must you. Now, there are times where these transformations occur and you realize that, wow, this is not my person anymore. They were for a time, maybe for a long time. But now, something has occurred. My perspective has changed. My values have shifted. My goals have realigned in this other individual, I don't really see how they fit in. There's an awakening happening this week. And part of that awakening comes from Venus opposing Uranus. You have the planet of relationships opposing the planet of revolution. What does that say? Quite simply... It's a revolution to your relationships. So be open to the revolution of your relationships. Don't hide from it. Don't run from it. Lean into it. Don't cling to the way things have always been. Rather, love the change. Love the change. Even if it feels uncomfortable which it might. 
But the alignment with Neptune may help soothe the sting of Uranus opposing Venus. Hopefully that brings a deeper sense of compassion to you and your partners, empathy for each other. And the aspect between Pluto and Venus facilitates the necessary transformation so that you are feeling lifted from the exchange that you share with those that you're intimate with rather than feeling drained and them vice versa with you. That's the hope. That's the goal. Now these transits occur boom, boom, boom. Monday through Friday, Monday through Thursday. Monday through Friday even. With the first one being the opposition between Venus and Uranus, that happens exact on Monday. The trine between Venus and Neptune happens exact on Tuesday, October 15th. And the sextile between Venus and Pluto occurs exact on Thursday, October 17th, which is the same day that Venus transits into Sagittarius and the same day as the full moon in Aries. So let's discuss these final two transits. The full moon in Aries is a release. The full moon is the exhale. The moon is full because it's fully reflecting the light of the sun. Now let's think about Aries. So this is a release, the full moon, but what do we want to release? Well, what we want to release is akin to the sign that is filtering the moon, which is Aries. And Aries is the cardinal fire sign symbolized by the ram. Aries is ruled by Mars, the god of war, the planet of action, aggression, conflict, and confidence. Every sign, every planet has a high frequency and a low frequency. And so when I think of these full moons, we want to release the low frequency. We want to, in order to release the low frequency, we must acknowledge the low frequency. We can't pretend like it doesn't exist. It does. The more that we pretend like it doesn't exist, the more volatile it becomes. You have to commune with your demon. You have to commune with your shadow. You can't ignore it. So quite directly, I ask you, what are you afraid of? What are your fears? Now, the moon is fully reflecting the light of the sun. So if the moon is in Aries and it's full, then that means the sun is in Libra. Libra is the cardinal air sign symbolized by the scales and ruled by Venus. Aries and Libra are the two signs that represent relationships. Aries represents my relationship with myself and Libra represents the relationship that I have with another. So, in navigating this release, which occurs October 17th at 4.25 a.m. Pacific Time, we are asking, what am I afraid of? What am I afraid of? What am I most insecure of when it comes to wanting to be authentic in my relationships? Because you see, oftentimes we will be inauthentic in our relationships we will be inauthentic in our relationships because our relationships we want to hold on to. And we're afraid that if we show who we really are in our relationships, then those that we are in relationship with might not choose us any longer. So there may be fear 
in being authentic in our relationships. What are those fears for you? That's the question. Now, if you don't know, ask. Call it out. Show me. What am I afraid of? Look for the signs. The universe, God, is always trying to communicate with you. Pay attention. In order to have healthy relationships, in order to have a healthy relationship, there must be authenticity. I think back to those days in the Old West. We're riding on our horses. We get to the depot. We've found some gold. And we want to trade in the gold for something else. And they weigh the gold, but there's something off about the gold because it's fool's gold. If you put fool's gold on a scale and you're caught, that's a fight. That's going to create some bad blood. So in order to not have any bad blood, in order to cleanse yourself from the bad blood, you need to be authentic. So if you are unsure about what your fears are with regards to relationships, look deeper into where you may be inauthentic in your relationships. Have you been inauthentic in your relationships? Is anyone that you're in relationship with being inauthentic with you? If they are, then that's an indicator that you may be inauthentic with them because we're all reflecting each other. Now there's this other unique aspect that's occurring with the full moon, and that's the fixed star Lisef. Lisef comes from an Arabic word that means tip of the sting, tip of the stinger. And so this star represents an awakening, a shock. In Sagittarius, it's the sign of honesty, the mutable fire sign symbolized by the archer. So there may be a shocking truth that reveals itself to you on or around the full moon with regards to your relationships. The more shocking it is, the more asleep you may be. And what the universe, God, is wanting to do is to wake you from your slumber. Because God, the universe, wants you to be authentic. Well, why does God, the universe, want me to be authentic? Because the next time the planets and stars will be aligned in the way that they were aligned when you were born is over 25,000 years from the date, time, and place of your birth. So if that's the case, then you're a divine, unique miracle. And if you're being inauthentic, then you are, you are disparaging the miracle of God that is you. You are discounting yourself. Your self-worth needs to elevate. In order for your self-worth to elevate, you need to be authentic. This is why Aries is the sign that precedes Taurus. Taurus is the sign that represents self-worth and values. Well, how do I know my self-worth and values if I don't know myself? And I don't know myself because I've been authentic, because I'm just trying to please everyone around me, because I really, really, really want everyone to like me. Remember, the North Node is in Aries, as it has been for over a year, encouraging us to get real, to be yourself, to be direct, to be authentic. Chiron is transiting through Aries since 2019, encouraging us to face our fears and insecurities. Chiron still aligning with Jupiter, Jupiter in Gemini, 
these two aligning for the first time since 1870. Asking yourself the question, what am I afraid of? Show me my fears and insecurities. Show me where I am being inauthentic. Give me the courage to be myself. Give me the courage to be authentic. That's what this full moon in Aries is about. Continuing the same day is Venus transiting into Sagittarius. So beautiful. So beautiful, so amazing here. Because Sagittarius, the mutable fire sign symbolized by the archer, ruled by Jupiter, the god of thunder, lord of justice, the planet of luck and expansion. In the Old Norse traditions, Jupiter is known as Thor. Thor carries the hammer of the gods. Why does Thor get to carry the hammer of the gods? Because the gods recognize that Thor is righteous and he will wield that power accordingly and so he's given that power this power is now coming to our senses it's urging you to be honest about what you like and what you don't like it's freeing you from those relationships that are restricting you constricting you controlling you whether it's a lover, a friend, or a business partner, that they want you to like what they like. And maybe they push you into it in some way. Sagittarius will set you free. This is where we want the secrets to come to the surface before Venus transits into Sagittarius. Venus transiting through Scorpio is like, let's get through all of our secrets. Let's get into the nitty gritty, the sticky, the, the, the dirty, the, the shameful behind closed doors, all the things that we don't want to talk about that we want to whisper. Oh, don't tell anyone that. We want to get that out. We want to get it out because if it doesn't come out during Venus and Scorpio, then it comes out when Venus is in Sagittarius and that's when we're getting shot by a thousand arrows. And when people say the truth hurts, doesn't it? The truth hurts. But if you're working with the energy appropriately in the early part of the week, by the time we get to Venus transiting into Sagittarius with the full moon in Aries on Thursday, October 17th, which is Thor's Day, which is the day that is ruled by Jupiter, which is the planetary ruler of Sagittarius. You see the beauty here? If you're working with the energy in these first few days, by the time we get to Thor's day, you're, you're not saying the truth hurts. You're saying the truth will set you free. The truth will set you free. Where you can be honest and open and forthright in your relationships and what you receive in return is love from your partners. And they are honest and forthright and truthful with you. And what you feel from them is love. What you emanate to them is love. Venus transits through Sagittarius from October 17th to November 11th. The last time Venus transited through Sagittarius was December 29th, 2023 to January 23rd, 2024. The time before that was November 15th to December 9th, 2022. And the time before that was October 7th to November 5th, 2021. So think back to those dates for clues on what could be in store for you this time around as Venus transits through Sagittarius. In what ways can you free yourself in your relationships? When you love someone, you will set them free. In what way can you free your partners? In what way can you be more honest about what you like and what you don't like in order to encourage your partners to be more honest about what they like and what they don't like? Let's open the conversation. Let's open the relationship 
in a way that feels more freeing to all parties, where we can truly be ourselves. This is a powerful week, and I'm excited for you to experience it. I'm excited to hear from you, to hear what you're experiencing, whether you want to reach out to me on YouTube or Spotify, you can leave a comment there. Of course, you can message me on on Instagram. I really like the public messages though because it really it helps people see the work that we're doing here. Uh, but I, I love the private messages as well if, if that's what you feel called to do. Uh, I'm just excited to hear from you and I'm excited to hear how what we're sharing is helping you and to hear how what we're sharing is reflecting what you're going through during the week. I hope it's supporting you. I hope it's guiding you in the best possible way. I hope it is empowering you, this information. And I'm truly honored to be here communicating with you. I'm honored that you're here listening to what I have to share. Now, before we close the week, I do want to to delve into a darker area, which is P. Diddy, Sean Combs, Puff Daddy. Uh, I'm not going to place any judgment here. I don't know the facts. I don't know what's going on, uh, except that he's been indicted for some very, very serious crimes that if they're true, they are horrifying and uh, really quite sad. Uh, and somebody reached out to me about, you know, what's going on in his chart. And when I looked, I was like, wow, wow. And I wanted to talk about this because part of, you know, the work that I'm doing here as a guide who uses the language of astrology and elements of human design to help those who connect with me, whether it be through a reading, through the podcast, through the weekly work that I do with my clients to help them you navigate your way through life in a way that supports and empowers you on your journey. Part of that is teaching you this ancient language so that you can use it to empower yourself. And the way that I learned to communicate this language, you know, so many people ask me, like, what books have you read on astrology? What books can you read? Um, you know, can you recommend for astrology? And I'm looking here, I got a lot of books on, on astrology. I haven't read any of them from cover to cover. Uh, I've cherry picked and looked at different things. That's just how my mind works, my ADHD mind. It's hard for me to really sit and read page to page from start to finish, uh, unless I'm reading a biography. Um, the book I recommend, of course, is my book, The Basics of Astrology, which uh, is is really a book that it is about the symbols. In order to be fluent in a language, you need to uh, learn how to read it. And so I think it's very important to understand the meaning of the symbols of the language of astrology. And that's what my book is about, The Basics of Astrology. But the way that I learned this ancient language was by just diving in and looking at thousands of astrological codes, whether it be friends, family members, acquaintances, co-workers, and of course, public figures. And so we look at P. Diddy, Sean Combs, Puff Daddy, and his chart. We don't know what time he was born, so it gives us a limited view of what's occurring in his astrological code. Uh, but he was born on... November 4th, 1969, and on that day, the sun is in Scorpio. Scorpio, as we know, as we've talked about earlier in this podcast, is the sign of secrets. And so Scorpios, in that lower frequency, might be keeping secrets that uh, you know, maybe there's something nefarious going on there. It is possible. So that's one indicator. This is not to say that all Scorpios are this way. I myself am a, Scorp I'm a Scorpio. And so uh, Scorpios, they have their secrets. Uh, some may be darker than others. 
Sometimes it's secrets they're keeping for themselves, and other times it's the secrets they're keeping of others. But what's really interesting are the transits that are occurring. Like I mentioned earlier that Chiron, the wound, and the ancient wisdom which is unlocked through healing that wound, is transiting through Aries. This is creating an awakening in all of us that is urging us to face our fears and insecurities. What's interesting about this transit right now is at 21 degrees, it's aligning with one, two, two planets in P. Diddy's chart. It's aligning with his Venus, the planet of relationships, and his Jupiter, the planet of expansion, uh, the, the Lord of Justice, both of which are in Venus, the sign that both of them are in Libra, the sign that Venus rules. And so Chiron is opposing P. Diddy's Venus and Jupiter. So he's going through a major awakening in terms of his righteousness, what is right, what is wrong, his relationships and his senses, and any fears or insecurities that are coming up in this area. Now I mentioned earlier we talked about Uranus and Neptune and Pluto all transiting close together in the three signs that they're in for the first time in maybe 25,000 years. Like I said, I went back to 13,000 BC. I couldn't find another time when they were within a couple degrees of each other and only found one other time where all three were in the same signs that they're in right now. Well... Where they are right now is aligning with P. Diddy's Mars, his Neptune, and his Pluto. Which again is fascinating because Mars and Pluto are the two planets that rule Scorpio, the sign of secrets. P. Diddy was born with Mars at 29 degrees in Capricorn and Pluto at 26 degrees in Virgo. He was born with Neptune in Scorpio, the sign of secrets at 27 degrees. So even though Mars and Pluto aren't in Scorpio, they're the two planets that rule Scorpio, Neptune is in Scorpio. These three planets are all being hit right now by Uranus, the planet of revolution, in Taurus, the sign of reality, Neptune, the planet of dreams, fantasy, illusion, deception, in Pisces, the sign that represents everything that Nep Neptune represents, and then Pluto, in Capricorn, another sign that represents reality. So these are transforming P. Diddy's action-oriented nature, his sexual nature, they're transforming his dreams, his fantasy, his guilt, his shame, his regret, his blame. They are transforming his daily routine, his health, his diet, his job. This is all happening right now for P. Diddy. So... Why is this happening? I always have to look at the North Node. And P. Diddy's North Node is in Pisces. Which shows why he's so successful at music. Because he's really, at his high, highest frequency, is supposed to be elevating people in their unconscious. In the low frequency in his south node in Virgo, he is trying to control. And so maybe he has been too controlling in his daily life, in the people around him, rather than being compassionate and empathetic and helping others draw into the unconscious in a way that supports them and empowers them. And maybe that's why this is happening to him. But you can see why it's happening now because of where these planets are aligning, mainly the three that I mentioned, Uranus, 
Neptune, Pluto, and then also Chiron. And Jupiter, which is in the mix, aligning with his Jupiter and his Venus, just expanding everything. I mean, this is huge. So I will leave you there with that. And I hope this has been entertaining and informative and empowering to you. I want to thank you for your time, for your energy, for listening to this podcast, for all your support. And again, if you would like me to support you one-on-one to help you uncover the nature of your astrological code, who you are, why you're here, what you're meant to do on this planet, what's happening in your life now, what happened way back when, I'm here to help you find clarity within yourself. Contact me for a reading at theweeklytransit.com. Like and subscribe this video. Like and subscribe. Like this video and subscribe to this channel. (laughs) I've fumbled over a few times, but you're here with me in almost a live recording because I'm not going to edit this. I'm just going to roll with it as it is. So thank you so much. And I'll look forward to seeing you next week. Wishing you all the best as you ride the planetary waves. Thank you for listening to the Weekly Transit. If you're curious to learn how these transits or any other transits may be affecting you, or if you're interested in learning more about your astrological code, contact me for a reading at theweeklytransit.com. If you're interested in delving into the world of psychotherapy with Gabriella, you can schedule a consultation with her at gabrielladurso.com. That's G-A-B-R-I-E-L-L-A-D-U-R-S-O dot com. Support for the podcast can be done through a monthly contribution on Spotify, rating us five stars, subscribing to our channel on YouTube, or writing a favorable review on Apple Podcasts. We are grateful for your support. This episode was produced by me, Scott Tajarian. Music written by Ben Leinbach from Listen Deep by Amber Herzog Lyman. Wishing you all the best as you ride the planetary waves.